Hi, I'm William Everhart, Director of Training here at Lodestone, and today I'd like to talk to you about creating interactive hotspots with InDesign. Buttons have to be the most common interactive element in any digital document, and most of the time they're a visual graphic that actually look like a button. We click them and something happens. But there are times, however, when having button-like functionality without the visible attributes would be most beneficial. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to add an invisible button or interactive hotspot to an InDesign document. Okay, so let's take a look at this interactive document that I want to create. I've got a little drawing here of a German U-boat and I've got some little instructions up here at the top. So I have a title and then I'm telling the user that if they mouse over different compartments they can see more information about this particular uh, submarine. So uh, just a little closer look. I'm going to zoom in. I've created a couple little boxes in here. There's a little box here uh, around the weapons array. And if I come over here to the front um, in this uh, torpedo compartment, there's another little container here. So what I want to do is convert these over into uh, interactive elements, uh, hotspots, if you will. So uh, a user can mouse over these and get some more information. So let's see how that whole process works out. I'm going to slide over here to the back of the boat and here is an engine compartment here so uh, maybe that would be an area of interest so I'm going to create a, a hot spot so that when a user mouses or clicks over this area they would get some information about the engine or something so what I'll do is I'm going to come over here to the left in my toolbox and I'm going to use this rectangle frame tool now you could use any of these shape tools if you wanted but I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I use the frame tool because it creates a container that has no fill, no stroke. It has no decoration. It's invisible. So I'm just going to drag across this area and this is the engine compartment here. And um, next I need to convert this over to the interactive portion of it. Well in InDesign that is going to be the buttons panel. So over here I'm using InDesign CS6. It's buttons and forms. So I'll click that open and I still have the object, the little invisible rectangle there selected and I'm going to say, hey, change this type to a button. Now once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and give it a name and I generally give it a name relative to what it is. So I'm going to call this engine oops, button and I'm going to just abbreviate it as BTN. I'm going to hit the enter key or the return key. You do have to do this at InDesign to accept that name. If you don't do it, it'll always stay as like button one, button two, button three. You have to accept the name there. So uh, I've got that done. Now I need to change the event. What causes this button to work? So the default is on release or tap. As you can see, Adobe is already uh, thinking about tablet devices here for this. So tapping rather than clicking with a button. Um, this is the default and that's what I would normally use. But in this case, I want the user to just hover over these areas. So I'm going to change the event to on roll over. Once I do the rollover, then what action is to take place? So there's a little plus sign here. I'll click on the plus sign and as you can see I have various interactive elements that I can do, so different commands that I can issue here. So I could have it go to a particular page in the document here, I could have it visit my website. In this case I want it to show and hide another button and or form. So I'm going to choose that option and then I get a list of all these buttons that are available. Well I've already created this and I created a little block called the Info3 and it's a button. So I'm going to tell it to show that. So I click on this little item here and it gives it a little eyeball. It says now when you hover over this show info 3. All right. Well that's great um, but I want to go ahead and also add another event to this uh, interactive element here. So as it is right now when I roll over this item the little info block is going to pop up but when I roll away from it nothing's going to happen. I have to tell it to on roll off to turn that off. So I'll go right back up here to the top and I'm going to change the event. Now this doesn't it doesn't turn this roll over event off. It just says, "Hey, in addition to the roll over, if a person rolls off of the item, I want you to do this." And so I'll add an action of show hide buttons and forms 
and that same info3 right now it's got a little symbol has an X in it um, that's just going to ignore it I'm going to click it once that turns it on I'm going to click it again and it puts a little red line through the eyeball and it says be sure and hide that item so back again up here at the top under roll over it's going to show the info3 the little eyeball is solid here and then under roll off it's going to hide it. It's going to be sure and turn it back off. Okay, so where is this info3? Let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, I'm going to zoom out here. And um, the part that you didn't see in this video is how to create these other elements. And that's very easy. Uh, we'll perhaps cover that in another video. But here in my layers panel, I have my interactive content. I'm going to turn those on. So these are my little, uh, little bubbles here, my little interactive bubbles uh, that will pop up. So um, at this point, you could either export this as a PDF, and this would work. You could export it as HTML, and that would work. Uh, Flash, it would work for that, depending on what your needs are. If you want to preview this, there is actually a preview button here. I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to play this preview so we can see the, the action here. So right now, that little item is already on. I'm going to have to go in and toggle that off, but the other two are there um, invisible they're hidden so if I mouse over this torpedo area you can see the little bubble pops up when I mouse away from it the bubble goes away and the same here when I mouse up it's there when I mouse away oh it disappears the same with the gun here so I've got a little problem there with this one it wants to stay on uh, or it wants to come on to begin with so I'm going to fix that to fix that I'll just go back I'm going to select the little bubble itself so let me grab my selection tool select this bubble and I'll open up the buttons and forms because this thing is a button okay and I created it just like you created that little invisible button it's just this one's visible and right here I'm gonna tell it hidden until triggered so you hide until I call for you now in the layout here it's not hidden it's gonna stay visible it's only when I export this or when I preview this item so let me preview that again let's see what we get no talk bubbles here. Everything looks good. Let me mouse over the engine compartment. There's my talk bubble. Let me mouse away from it. It disappears. Now it's working the way I want it to work. And now I have this interactive hotspot. Doesn't look like a button, but I give the user some instructions here to mouse over the different compartments. That way they know they can interact with it. So that's it. That's an invisible hotspot. You could also use this on type as well. Um, generally use hyperlinks for text. We just convert the text to a hyperlink, but you could do the same thing. Um, you could create an invisible box and just put it right over the word German and then maybe have this pop up a uh, description of the country of Germany or something like that. Whatever it is you want to do. Uh, you could have it navigate to a web page. So that's it. Invisible hotspots. Very, very handy and easy to create right here inside of InDesign. Thank you for watching. For more quick tips or more in-depth training, please go to www.lodestone.com